Dutch researchers propose circular airport runways. Scientists in the Netherlands are working at the country's aerospace center to develop circular airport runways. Researchers at the Endless Runway, a project funded by the European Commission, believe circular runways could have several benefits, including being more environmentally friendly and less noisy. The group proposes constructing a 3.5 kilometer wide circular runway with banked sides divided into 18 runway segments with the airport terminal in the center of the circle. The length of the circular runway would be equal to three straight runways while being able to handle the air traffic of four. Circular runways would allow planes to land and take off at any point in the circle. Pilots would be able to land in directions with the most favorable weather conditions, while avoiding difficult maneuvers in situations such as strong crosswinds. The circular design would also mean aircraft coming into land circle the airport fewer times, thus using less fuel. The design allows for three planes to land and take off at the same time. Because of centrifugal forces, planes would automatically go slower and move toward the center of the runway. Circular runways could also limit noise pollution by spreading it more evenly around the airport. The US military conducted tests in the 1960s with circular runways, but commercial circular runways have never been built. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Ready for takeoff? Then watch these. This is what the airport of the future might look like. A UK company has released a concept of what airports will be like by the year 2040, and they look a whole lot more efficient and passenger friendly than today's airports. In the future, airline passengers will be expected to check in via self-service desks, which include biometric scanners that can scan passengers' facial features, iris patterns, and fingerprints in order to verify their identities. After check-in, a biometric token will be issued and stored in the passenger's smartphone. This serves as a boarding pass and ID. Luggage can be checked in at drop-off points. Laser molecular body scanners can detect even tiny quantities of dangerous materials in the passenger's clothing or their luggage without the need for a body search. Passengers may buy duty-free goods from virtual shopping stations and have the goods delivered to their homes. Airports in the future may need to expand their runways and parking facilities to cope with the increasing size of aircraft and the number of passengers. Airport control is likely to be operated remotely from outside the airport, with staff monitoring live video footage of the facility. Upon arrival, passengers will be notified when their luggage is ready for collection. When an airport enters the full self-service phase, passengers will get help from virtual assistants. And in fact, many such technologies are already being implemented. For example, biometric scanners are currently being trialed at Heathrow and Schiphol airports. Sleeping pods allow people to catch some shut-eye pretty much anywhere. Google is famously known for these babies, but they're not the only company that allows workers to sleep at work. With the London Olympics approaching back in 2012, one local English company anticipated that heavy traffic would affect employees' commutes. So the company built sleeping pods that allowed employees to sleep in the office with privacy. These sleeping pods included a single mattress, while more advanced models also featured a stereo and a mirror. And now people can also choose to sleep with some privacy and dignity at airports instead of sprawling across several seats in front of gawking onlookers. Abu Dhabi International Airport was the first airport in the world to offer sleeping pods in 2013, although the service has since extended to many other airports worldwide, from Dallas-Fort Worth to London Gatwick. Abu Dhabi's Go Sleep sleeping pods allow users to lie completely flat. Each pod is able to partly or fully block out sounds in the busy airport, depending on the user's preference. Later stage pods will offer Wi-Fi access, power sockets for charging electronic devices, and space to store luggage under the cushion. The Go Sleep sleeping pods can be rented out for about 12 US dollars an hour, or about the price of three coffees. As we grow more aware of the myriad of health issues that come with sleep deprivation, sleeping pods seem increasingly desirable. Sonic nets could prevent bird strikes at airports. 
Researchers have found a new way to prevent bird strikes at airports, a problem that has cost the aviation industry billions of dollars worldwide. Bird strikes are a serious problem for the global aviation industry and are blamed for 255 human deaths between 1988 and 2013. Traditional methods used to reduce bird strikes include shooting, poisoning, scaring them with dogs, and capturing the birds. However, none of these methods are highly effective. Looking for a high-tech method to scare birds away from airports, researchers in Virginia set up a sonic net zone near an airstrip. It had speakers and amplifiers emitting decibel levels equivalent to that of between a domestic dishwasher and a busy restaurant. The noise disrupted bird communication and forced them to go elsewhere. The experiment found that 80% of the bird population near the airstrip area was reduced as a result of the sonic net. Researchers said there was no sign of the birds becoming habituated to the noise generated by the sonic net, meaning the method could remain effective for a long period of time. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Houston planes hit with dangerous laser attacks. Passengers on two flights coming into Houston had no idea their pilots were being blinded by something as little as this handheld laser. On February 15th, Southwest Airlines Flight 2405 was preparing for landing at Hobby Airport. The 747 was about a thousand feet from the ground when a green laser beamed through the right side of the cockpit straight into the pilot's eyes. He was forced to turn over the wheel to his co-pilot while descending, but managed to land the plane smoothly. That same evening, but at Houston's second commercial airport, Delta Flight 4531 was making its descent into George Bush Intercontinental when a red laser temporarily blinded the pilot's vision. According to the FAA, in 2013, Houston ranked second in the nation for laser strikes with the reported 126 cases. Pilot Michael Turner took Tomo News aboard a private jet and explained how foolish and dangerous this seemingly innocuous prank really is. It, it is serious business. Um, the pilots are trying to focus and do an, a great job. And the distraction, even though they might think that they're just playing around, they're having fun, they're pointing the laser, that distraction uh, can cause a catastrophic event. Turner told us he's been struck with lasers at least 10 times in the last five years. The FBI last year began offering $10,000 to anyone with tips leading to the arrest of someone aiming lasers at planes. Mary Matai, Tomo News, Houston.